Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first school board meeting of 2022. Um, first thing we'll start with today is the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do roll call, Ms. Kuzer. Even though we can see Mr. Marvin there, he's not with us, so we'll do roll call. Here. Right. Here. Here. Mr. Marvin? Mr. Marvin? Can you hear out there? Mrs. Kuzer, you're going to have to go up to the podium um, oh, since you don't have a mic there. Here, you know what? <laughs> Mr. Marvin, We're just doing roll I'm call. Here. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan here. Mrs. Fortney here. Mr. Smith here. Mrs. Miles here. Mrs. Harold here. Thank you. Okay. The agenda is as we see it, Mr. or Dr. Klein. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Second. Questions? Anyone? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Wait, wait, I told him to quit. Hang on. Okay. Who's the first and second. Me and second. Kim. Kim. And everybody said yay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ready? Okay. Uh okay, next item then is the approval of the minutes. Do we have motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, there the date is it, it is a month ago. It's December the seventh. That's the last time we had a meeting. Okay, Mrs. Zimmerman is making the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Klein. Oh, the minutes from the 13th. Yeah. Uh, correct. I'm trying to remember if I was silent. I was online for that, right? I did it. Yeah, I was online. Though. Okay. Okay, um, motion to approve the minutes for the 13th. Move to approve. Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Okay, superintendent's report, Dr. Kwan. Okay, just a, a, one, a couple of things. One, we uh, actually, I, from our school nurse from Kara Barnhart, got a report that you know, we, at, back in the summer, we had uh, set up to do uh, uh, optional testing if parents wanted their child tested or if staff member wanted tested, we would be able to do it. So we had that capability and we've been doing it all year. Uh, and I know she did 126. Yes. So, so she's been doing a lot of them. We're looking at, you know, other ways to try to be able to help in that way. And I think out of those 126 were way too positive. So we are glad we have that option. Um, it saves parents a lot of headaches. We've heard nothing but good things from parents because they've said that it, it you know, if my kid's negative, they stay in school. You know, or if they're positive, they know at least I don't have to take them to the doctor. So that's been a positive. Um, and uh, I also, I wanted to let, you know, I, I spent the morning over with the uh, uh, high school uh, the business department doing mock interviews. That was great. I was getting to meet those kids and, and getting to know some of them while I was sitting there uh, uh, grilling them with a number of questions. Uh, you know, it makes you feel pretty good. You know, yeah, they're really good kids. Uh, they were doing a nice job. So our teachers took care of them well. Uh, and it was just a, a, a lot of fun. I probably had more fun than they did because they looked scared, but I think after a <laughs> while they calmed down. So, uh, but anyhow, it was, it was a really neat experience. And I know there are a number of community people that are doing them this week. I think tomorrow and then Wednesday. That, that's all I have. Okay. okay, thank you, Dr. Klein. Okay, now it's time for the first and only public comment. Um, Again, as we if we see the need to add another one for some meetings, we will do that. Uh, but tonight it looks like only is it Mrs. Nolte would like Nolte. Would you like to speak, Ms. Nolte? Okay, come on up, please. Okay, and if you would um, 
Please say your name and your address, please. Uh, Virginia Nolte, 581 Pack Court, Waynesboro, PA. Yes, ma'am. I don't have any children in school anymore, but I have grandkids in the world. And from when my kids was in school, I took notice that uh, all kids got treated. If there was Hall Baker kids, they got treated different than the other kids because the school system, I don't care how much they've always told me, there's no uh, dividing the I uh, think, oh, yes, there is. Their face, there's great big favoritism. But my main concern is now, why do you people take out the penmanship of school and put in and take out home economics and you put in the sex education and everything else? And now, my I've had neighborhood kids where I live at now at Wallace Court coming home saying, oh, mommy, I got a closet today. I'm in fifth grade. Come on. You guys are giving condoms to babies that are babies. They're out there having kids. Come on. And I'm sure you know how to write your name. So why can't these kids learn how to write their name? Come on. Uh, well, we do teach cursive. You don't teach writing because I know for a fact, I was at the hospital not too long ago and I heard an old man tell the receptionist that his grandson couldn't write for him because he was only taught how to print his name in school and he was 15 years old. Come on. Well, ma'am, if you had an example of what school that involved, but I believe Dr. Yeah, Stern, for well, I mean, specifically because it is in our curriculum that they are to be learning to do cursive. So if you could give an example of what school that was, we could investigate that. Oh, I know. I, I talked to Bill Mann afterwards, and he said, my grandson goes to Waynesburg School. Okay. I mean, 15 years old, you're in senior high. Okay. Come on. Well, I, I, that's my response. If you could tell us where that was, where that child went to school. These kids need to have teachers that's going to show them that they're not afraid of them, that... And, that, and then my daughter came home one time when she was in school and she said, uh, I smacked her. She goes, now I'm gonna call the cops on you. I said, good, I'll make it short for you. I dialed the number four. Well, and your other, your other point, ma'am, I would say that if you could say where that student re supposedly received that contraceptive, if it could have a name or a building or something like that, we could certainly investigate it. That is not our policy to be distributing to so elementary school kids. So you're saying that you do teach chemistry? Yes. No, I doubt it. Yes, we do. We teach cursive writing in third grade in every school building. It's practiced in fourth and fifth grade. My grandkids are in the school district and I see the work that they do, that they are teaching third grade in every school, every elementary school in Waynesboro School District. Then why is, okay, the other thing is, why is fifth graders being given condoms? Well, that's what I'm saying. If you could somehow give an example of where this ha supposedly happened or a name, we could investigate it. That is certainly not anything we would be supporting or not part of our policy. So we would need more information from that. So if you would like to follow up, if you have more information. Oh, you believe could me, certainly... I keep on top of everything. Okay, well, you could certainly call. Uh, Mr. You know... Klein will tell you, I don't. Okay, well, you, we, could, we could certainly check that out if we had more information. So please feel free to call over to here to Clayton Avenue um, and we can, you know, investigate. But I mean, I think it's just terrible. You know, well, we would have be to no know favoritism between the kids just because this parent makes a million dollars and this kid gets uh, hand-me-down clothes and lives at Hallbaker. So what? They're all kids of God. Well, we, please, we certainly do not advocate treating kids differently. We try. Oh, yes, there is favoritism. Oh, yes, there is. Well, you're free for your opinion, but I dealt with it when my kids went to school. Okay, I appreciate your comments tonight. Uh, thank you for coming in. Come again, and if there's any other issues that you have in the future. Oh, believe me, you'll hear from me, I'm sure again. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, that's all we have. For anyone indicating want to speak tonight so we will move on then to board reports do we have any uh reports from any meetings um that we had anybody wants to talk about yeah we had policy in december which seems like it was a really long time ago mm -hmm. and it was a really busy long meeting um we got a good bit covered and 
we have another one. 15, please. Yeah, I, yeah, I, think, I think it's 15. It is. Well, I don't have my paper 15 here, but this week. 19. It's okay. a 19, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, we hope Dr. McCallum can come. <laughs> and uh, it's really nice uh, when we have an elementary person too, who maybe used to be not an elementary person, but <laughs> he's certainly welcome to come. It's just really nice when, um, you know, when, when we have administration there, it really helps us get through stuff that, you know, we wouldn't be able to get through as quickly. And what we're doing will be in for Doc so we can learn located. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, I'd also like to say we had a budget meeting last night. Mm -hmm. And our next one and a good meeting, a very educational meeting. And our next one will be February 21st at 9 a.m. Okay. Anybody else? We are having an academic committee meeting tomorrow morning, or not tomorrow morning, because it got changed. It's going to be two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and we'll be here uh, in this room. Is that it? Facil okay. Facilities on next Monday. And facilities is next Monday evening. Yep. Morning. Morning. That's right. At nine. Nine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. Time for the student. Report. Come on down. Thank you. I got your names flipped. Just so you're just so your name. Are they flipped? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, you can hear me. Um, so as you all know, the semester change is coming up, so that is just something to keep in mind as classes change and we'll have career tech students um, either coming back to school or going to career tech. Um, winter sports are well underway. This is actually a very interesting year because we're having our first swim team, which is not great success, and also our first bocce team, which was a collaboration with Special Olympics and PIAA that was also very successful in its first two matches. So congratulations to them and congratulations to Jada who made, set a new school record with her vault score in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. That's very impressive. Um, something also to keep in mind, as some of you may or may not know, we had a young man in our community, Samuel Benshoff, pass away um, last night, and his loss is definitely felt greatly within our student body. As many knew him or played soccer with him, he made a great impact. And just keep in mind that and like resources available to those who are struggling with that. When did he graduate, Pierce? I believe last it was just year. last year. Okay. Karis placed third place in a poetry contest. That was shared on Facebook. Oh, great. Oh, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Moving on to business. First item is student waivers. Dr. Sternheim. Thank you, Mrs. Harold. Uh, the recommendation is to approve the two student waivers that were discussed in the executive session prior to the board meeting. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Dr. Sternheim? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. On to personnel, Dr. Sternheim. Thank you, Mrs. Harold. I'd like to direct your attention to the personnel items. Uh, in the board docs, we have resignation of support staff, uh, reassignment of professional staff, transfer of support staff, change of hours in support staff, appointment of game personnel, and appointment of substitute support staff. In addition, we have uh, a new professional staff member uh, being added to the special education department in at the middle school also have a series of leaves to uh, be approved and uh, one more page, a resignation of professional staff, retirement of support staff, um, as well as appointment to support staff. So um, I would like to also just recognize um, Pam Ebersole, who was my secretary 
um, at um, Summit View Elementary for five years. She is retiring with 30 years. I believe Dr. Royer also worked with Pam, and she's a wonderful lady and has contributed so much over the years. So we want to wish her the very best at her retirement. And fortunately for us, she's waiting to the end of the school year. So congratulations, Pam. Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Any questions for Dr. Sternheim? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. And bus drivers, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for uh, your uh, action. We have two drivers for the district as well as two drivers for McLeese. They've met all the requirements, the background checks, et cetera. So we're asking for your approval. Okay. Motion. Second. Any questions? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. Thank you. Thank you. School police contract. Would that be you, Dr. Klein? Okay. Uh, this this contract would be a new contract uh, with our uh, with Officer Gordon. Officer Gordon, over the, the I'm not sure how many years seven years that he's been at least I think so. Yeah, he's 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 been paid uh, per hour. Um, we know that there's been a lot of poaching by districts uh, for well various staff, but also for police. And one thing we uh, would like to do is offer him a contract that will at least support him for a while. So it's a five-year contract uh, that we'd like to uh, keep Officer Gordon until he's done a good job and he's been a, 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 an asset to the district. So um, we ask that you approve his uh, contract. You're correct. He was hired in 2014, 2014. summer of 2014. Oh, okay. Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Second. Any questions, comments? Yeah, he's all he's oh, has he? he's oh, okay. Yep. okay. Yep. As a new member on the discipline committee, I would just like to state that I've been very impressed with Matt Gordon. Um, you know, how he conducts himself here and how he speaks to us and to the students that are in front of us. I just, I want to keep him. So hard to imagine life without him. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It would be, I just can't imagine doing this without him right now. Dr. McCown, do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, all those in favor of approving this contract, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you have a course selection guide um, being presented for you to take a look at in your folder today from the high school. So um, this is up for discussion. Acting on it will be the next meeting after we've had a chance for everybody to look at it, see if there's any further questions. Uh, is there any, did, it, did anybody have access to this before tonight? It was, it was in the Friday. Was it all yeah, in there that we all yeah, saw? And, okay, I had a hard copy. Okay. It, okay, well then maybe a draft. We... there's there's lots of there's lots of notes from Dr. McCallum in it. So it's just a draft for your review. It is a relatively lengthy document. The academic committee will be looking at it as well. In length this, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This week. And so if you have any specific questions, you can direct them to Dr. McCallum or myself. Mm -hmm. And we will we will move towards um, you know, any type of revisions for final approval then on um, January twenty fifth. Okay, did anybody have anything in general then? If everybody had a chance to at least look at it a little bit, or we can wait for a more detailed discussion later. Yeah. Um, my assumption is that the academic committee will have a, a recommendation of some sort, which non members can agree or not agree or have other questions, whatever you'd like to do with that. Okay, so if there's nothing for tonight. Okay, all right. Yes. Yeah, I was going to make that suggestion. What page, like, what is the heading of that? What's the heading at the top of that page? Oh, okay, right there. Got it. Okay. Mrs. Harold. Yes. 
um, just a reminder, if anybody is speaking, they need to come up to the podium so That's right. everybody can okay. hear. Okay. Let's switch that out. Yes, right. So PDE put Act 158 into place, I believe, in the fall of 20. Mm -hmm. And that goes into effect for the class of 2023, so the current junior class. Mm -hmm. um, and I added that section to the course selection guide. It's also going to be in the January family newsletter as we try to figure out the best way to notify people that that change is coming. And as we also figure out exactly how yeah, we're, we're going to keep track of the multiple ways. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're gonna, we're OK, gonna but, but let me understand this. This is a so so PDE is saying you don't have to have it as a graduation requirement. However, the district could decide to keep that in. Is that correct? The, the, for, are you talking about the graduation project? Yes, that's correct. Uh, I'm talking about the research, the research paper. paper. Correct. Research paper. Yes. yes. So that be, that is a district requirement. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just but the tables our... are what I summarized from the legislation. Okay. 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 And again, and every, anybody not on the committee, of course, you're welcome to come if you can tomorrow morning to the academic tomorrow right. afternoon. Right. 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 So, afternoon. Yeah, two o'clock. Had to change it. I had so. a brief description in one of the past Friday folders, but there's also Q&A information that I can provide in the Friday folder to have a better understanding of Act 158. But we're still in the okay. process of muddling through it as well. So it goes into effect for 2023. Okay. Yep. Right now on the agenda, if anybody's interested, most of the discussion tomorrow is high school issues. More, usually we have a more balance between the, the three levels, but tomorrow is by far uh, high school dominated. So if anybody cares about that. Okay, all right then, we're uh, ready to move on then. Uh, on to new software forecast site. Five site, S site, whatever that says. Five. five site, okay. And who would that be? Mr. Holtzman. Thank you. Um, we actually looked at this software several years ago. We actually had a, um, I guess a free version of it, so to speak, for probably about a year or two at least, and another competing product. Um, we did mention that here in the uh, email as well. We had both of those kind of for free for about two years. Um, that was kind of a combination of PSBA and PASBO provided that across the state for the school districts to use. We wanted to go ahead and continue with one of those products, but we just didn't put it in the budget each year. So we tended not to put that item out there. However, as we look and kind of have a need to do more comparisons, um, not only ourselves, but comparing to a lot of other school districts to say, you know, what does our student teacher ratio look like compared to other districts? Um, what is our transportation cost compared to other districts? Um, a lot of different metrics that we can use with Forecast 5 that are very PA centric. And what this software will do is allow us to kind of get that information. We can do a limited amount of that today, um, but it becomes very manual. We have to go out to PDE, we have to try to find the right data, pull it in and try to do some comparisons. This is loaded for us. It also is synchronized with our financial software, which shows you how tight it is in the PA. But about half the school districts in PA use the financial software that we use, which is CSIU. And so we can even load individual data if we want to get even more granular right from our ledger right into this um, software. Now, the software itself has two sets of levels. We're asking for the basic level because we really want to get used to it first and see if we want to take it to the next level. The next level gets more into forecasting, longer range type items with the budget. But again, we want to get used to it first to see if we really do like it again. We really want to use it again more heavily before we commit to going to the next level, so to speak. So um, the, I guess the proposal here is um, to go ahead and move forward with this uh, agreement. It would be half of that cost, half of the 76.49 this year, because they would prorate it for the rest of this year. And then we would put that into the budget for next year at the 76.49. And we did go back and we actually looked at both products again. Um, we did demos with both companies, probably, um, I think that was just before the holidays. Um, we ended up settling on uh, on Forecast 5 just because we thought it had a lot more um, PA emphasis versus the other product. Okay, so are you asking for 3000 whatever it is? Right, about 3825 38, okay. for this year's budget. Um, but you're saying, but you want it in next year's budget. So are you saying that this vote would include now and next year first right. stage? Is that what you're looking for? I would prefer that if possible, just because it's only about six months now. And I mean, we'll certainly use it for the next six months, but we'd really like to go ahead and try to continue using that as we get into the next year. I will tell you, I've used both in other districts. I think the one that makes choice over is, is a pretty good product. The other one's very good too, 
the forecast part of this, and, and you know, there's academic and, and budget, you know, finance. Um, and those comparisons, it gives you good levels, and you can see trends. And so all three of those data points are, are important to look at. So um, you know, I, I, I agree with the forecast five. And I apologize, you're right, Dr. Klein. I forgot to mention that this does have a tremendous amount of student data that we can also compare as well, not just financial. I should have probably emphasized that as well. Okay, so so the forecast, five cast, whatever it is. Forecast five. Forecast five, okay. Right. I, I'm just need to clarify. So you want half the year left this year. You also want it approved for the following year. Correct, which would be the 7649. We're not okay, asking. Okay, you're not the, looking at the. We're not looking at the 22,000. Okay, okay. That's right. I'm looking at half the 22,000. No, actually, I was just looking for the 76 for next oh, year. I, oh. I'm not recommending using the forecasting yet just because I think it's going to take some time to get used to it again, to start loading with data and to make some comparisons. Um, if a year from now we realize we need to use it a lot more, we'll come back and ask you again to go to the next level. Okay. Thanks for answering that. Sure. Do we have other questions? Uh, Eric, you said it, yes, um, student data as well. So mm -hmm. who um, primarily be pulling student data? Is that something that, is it is it user friendly enough so that teachers can pull data as well? I can use an A, like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say, if the business department can pull the student data out, then you know it's easy to pull out. Um, they're probably, we'll typically have limited licenses, but we certainly can have that information available for uh, the academic side. And they can certainly pull that information out as well and go ahead and distribute it to the teachers. But typically there's very limited licenses on here. Not everybody will be able to pull it. And it's in this type of a system here, this is more cumulative data. So it's not gonna really drill down to the student data, which in a sense helps protect us from student information and another concern there. But um, again, this will be more useful more as a district level or even a building level, but not necessarily down to the actual student level. I hope that helps we, answer we the question. We do have other, you know, but it's very, you know, if, if you're looking at trends, you're trying to make comparison to other districts similar to your size or those. I was looking at one of the reports earlier today of all those districts that are about our same pre and, pre pre and reduced lunch rates and looking at their, 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 their per student spending. You know, we were actually at the bottom, which was no surprise to us. But when you look at the high school keystones, we were at the top. You know, we are second out of all those districts similar to us. So, uh, in, in the state. So. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So, I assume everybody feels comfortable voting on this tonight. Uh, if so, do we have a motion to approve? Yes, to approve. Second. Okay. There's no further questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the support staff payroll management system. That sounds like Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so today we have um, really a very manual process when it comes to doing timesheets, so to speak. We have physical timesheets themselves. We also have some people who fill uh, their time out online using our financial software as well. But as people are in the building in different places throughout the building, um, if they're moving between buildings, we certainly have employees who um, are providing services for us um, in one building, then they move for part of the day into another building. Um, that could be anybody from custodians to uh, support staff who work in our kitchens. Uh, as they're moving around to the different buildings, it's very hard for a lot of our administrators realistically to keep track of where everybody is and how many hours they're working. Um, there's always concern sometimes a little bit, of course, from uh, the Affordable Care Act perspective, but we do have some reports that we pick up there. But the issue today, again, it's a very manual process. You have an administrator literally looking at you know, the timesheets, physical or online, saying, did that person work those days? Were they here that time? Were they not here that day? Is that the day they were off? Very difficult to kind of manage that. What this would be is a, an electronic version of a true time clock. Employees would go in and be able to basically badge in or put their time in that they've come into the building. Um, it takes a little picture to make sure it's them doing that. Um, we also would have it typically in the lobbies, um, but then they would also have to badge out, so to speak, again. So it becomes a way for us to really truly track the employees, allows to give them a little bit more responsibility, as well as to make sure that we're paying them correctly as well. Because if they've come in to work and they're timing in and timing out, they don't have to remember later on in the week when they fill out a timesheet, well, was I here that time? Was I not here that day? Um, it certainly should make it a little bit easier on them as well to make sure that they're keeping that as accurate as possible. 
Um, what we did like about this is it's the only one that we've been able to find so far that actually feeds right into our financial software. And that was the advantage to this. Um, we typically would sit down with our payroll department, with uh, the technology department, with Mr. Erickson, when we look at this type of software. And uh, they both liked it. They both thought it was pretty effective, at least in managing this process a little bit better than what we're doing today. Um, we did take a look at it. It, it. it is not insignificant in terms of a cost. Certainly, we agree. Um, there's, there's the uh, cost essentially for the one time, which is the 51000 Then on an ongoing basis, it's about $26,000 a year. We can pick it up as part of our ESSER funding because the concept is, is we have employees now because of light staffing. We're moving employees around and having them work in multiple buildings at one time. So that becomes kind of a staff effectiveness type model as part of ESSER. So we can use ESSER funding for the next couple of years to go ahead and pay for this. That would be one of the items we would use. But again, not an insignificant amount of money. Questions? Yeah. So does this eliminate principals having to read the time sheets? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think so. I, there's always I mean, going to be. I, a, I will not. I will not, unless you yeah. can say definitely, absolutely. I, I mean, I would always say there's sometimes there's a potential that somebody's going to have to go in and say there's a problem here. But routinely, they won't have to sit down. But routinely, they wouldn't have to see that. Yeah. Other questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Other questions? Also, is, are they logging in from their own computer? No, we would actually have um, in most buildings we would have two locations that they would go into. So we really want to capture them when they're coming into the building. So we typically would have one in the front, one in the back of the building. A lot of people at the high school during the same time. It is a good bit. We could always look at the potential. If we need a third one, we could get a third one, certainly. Does it cost you more to have? It would have uh, one more. Uh, a third one would probably be an additional $1,800 if we had to get a third one. I mean, how, ma how many, I mean, you might not know this. I don't want sure. you to know this spot, but I mean, I'm guessing there probably is 20 support staff that clocked in the same time at the high school. Yeah, and it wouldn't take that long. It, they can pop in pretty fast. Uh, Mr. Holtzman. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Holtzman. Yeah. And you can't do this when their name back, when they swipe in, or they don't all swipe in. Um, Mr. Holtzman. Go ahead, Mr. Erickson. Um, I wanted to also remind you that um, we have the geolocation um, app that they can clock in with also that allows them to only clock in or clock out while they're at the district. Okay. Using that their cell phone. That would be something they could use on their mobile device? Yep. So that would help maybe solve that problem a little bit as well. We looked at this same software probably, I don't know, four or five years ago. At the time, it was about the only one in the market that really would fit uh, with the financial software. And it was slightly less expensive than what it is today, but not much, unfortunately. It just, it hasn't moved. I don't know. Uh, the pricing model hasn't moved, nor have competitors really come in to help uh, kind of offset this a little bit of market for some reason. And also, I wanted to add that their current badge um, will actually be what they use to uh, clock in as well. So there's not another another badge they have to carry. Well, if you added up all the principal time, reviewing time sheets. And accuracy. The recurring charge, that's every year for like 21,000 or 24,000? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it'd be 26,000 recurring. Now we can pick that up all the way through uh, 2024. So we can pick up in the 24, 25 uh, fiscal year. So we, um, with ESSER money, we'd go all the way to that period of time. Um, after that, then it would be a district cost fully. What I'm understanding is the principal. They do. I mean, I don't want to put Dr. McCallum on the spot, but he probably has the most. And uh, Dr. Godine. Please um, go to the podium if you're speaking. As she's coming up there, I think, I think as I don't want to take your wind away, but I think oftentimes we have a lot of support staff who, even with our online electronic system, they struggle using that. Mm -hmm. um, and so the secretaries are oftentimes taking yeah, time away from this, their duties. Correct. And you have staff who, with, with the paraeducators being able to, and our custodians and cafeteria staff being able to take off hourly mm -hmm. now too, you're tracking, you know, they might work three hours one day and they might work five hours the next day. So our secretaries are keeping a really close eye right now and trying to track that the absolute best they can. So a lot of times too, they're often going into the timesheets to check them for accuracy too before an administrator goes in and has to approve them. And I think at one point we were counting how many clicks it took and it was like eight. Eight to get in to, per staff member to get in and approve their timesheet. 
And this is just support staff, right? That's correct. Only support staff. Can I ask a question? How, mm -hmm. how are teachers handled? Do they do any, or are they pretty much, they are in the building at a certain time and they can leave at a certain time. That's it? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're not paid hourly. Yeah. Oh, because they're yeah. salaried. Okay. Right. We would track their time off. We would use the um, ASOP system for that okay. to tie in for their time off. Um, that's just for personal time, vacation time. Ails, ails, wipe your note. I think a lot of them still do. I, yeah. Yeah, if it came in. For additional duties. For additional yeah. duties. Yeah. 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 yeah, so if they I'm had, sorry. yeah, for additional duties like curricular releases or any work. No, no, this is just for support staff. This does not include a professional staff or administrators. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nay? Aye. It would be me. I'm a nay. Aye. Only because of the expense. I think it's $76,000 a lot of money. Nay, for, got yeah. that, uh, Ms. Ms. Cooser. Oh, we're voting on here. I guess we can do it on here. All right, motion carries then seven to two. James, you were a yay on that? Yes, I was. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Nay or a yay? I thought you were yay or yes. Is that where you are? Yes. Could you say that again? You didn't come through. Yes. Yes, okay. Okay, which will be recorded anyway, right? Not yet. Did we? I haven't seen that. Did it come up? The voting thing? Did it come on our screen? Yeah, you said you said, I got you. Oh, okay. I was going to say I never saw it. Okay. All right. So then it ends up 7 2, correct, Ms. Kuzer? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item is uh, IDEA. That's Mr. Holtzman again. Thank you, ma'am. Um, every year we receive IDEA funds that come from federal to the IUs, and they typically pass those back to us. We have a choice of um, using these funds in different ways, typically tied to special ed, of course. Um, historically, we've always used this to offset what's called our Schedule A. Um, the Schedule A is really just the name of the uh, list of charges and expenses that we pay the IU for services that they provide. Um, so in a typical year, they may charge us, it's probably right around maybe $1.7, $1.8 million dollars. And we use this to effectively offset that charge coming from the IU. So we're using it um, exactly as intended to provide services for students who have special needs. Um, and then the easiest way from a fiscal and a tracking perspective is just to build it against the IU who's gonna go ahead and charge us for those services. Um, this year, it's a little different. So we have not only the regular, but now there's some stimulus money coming through um, the same channel. This was kind of a surprise. We had not seen this happen before. Um, just found this out here right after the holidays. Um, so that's about an additional $147,000. Um, we're recommending we use both of those to help offset our IU special ed costs at this point. Um, budget, budgeting wise, I had to double check and take a look. Uh, we had budgeted, I'm going to round the number, $672,000, and we're getting six eighty seven. dollars So it's a little bit better there, but plus the one forty seven. dollars So that will certainly help a little bit more there as well. Um, again, there's going to be an expectation in some ways that if we have additional needs that we need to make sure that these students are achieving their goals, we may have to incur additional costs with the IU, but that'll be something the special ed department has to work through. Okay. Do we have a motion for this one? Move to approve. Second. Questions for Mr. Holtzman? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to financials, Mr. Holtzman. Thank you. We have, uh, for your discussion and action, we have the cafeteria and the general fund uh, bills. We also have purchase orders as well. And then finally, we have the exonerations that come in from J.P. Harris. J.P. Harris is our third party collector. Um, they're still collecting the old per capita taxes and old, and when I say old, anything more than a year old, uh, I'm sorry, technically anything more than six months old, for um, uh, the occupation taxes. So they go through and collect that as well for us. Uh, but they have the exonerations when they find that people have moved or can justify that they were not employed or things of that nature. Okay, uh, motion to approve. Move to approve. 
Second. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we covered both those items. On to informational items. Clayton, cabinet comments. Anybody? Come in. Uh, I was just going to say we have an in service day scheduled for this Friday. Uh, just a reminder of the board that we have the school uh, board appreciation dinner on the 25th. Uh, and unfortunately, we will not be holding Pack the House night this year. A little bit of a disappointment, but we recognize in light of uh, the situation, it's probably best that, that we postpone it till next next January. I know it's an event that our, our community and our students look forward to. And I'm not sure if it's 5.30. Yes, 5.30 at the Waynesboro Senior High School. Um, we're asking that you RSVP to uh, Mrs. Kuzer, and spouses are invited. And the admin team will also be invited. Can I add one thing? Sure. Uh, it, if, I, if I haven't notified you yet, but uh, one of the uh, <coughs> excuse me, a presenter for that evening, board meeting, will be uh, Steve Speka. She has been a past board member. She's been uh, one of the uh, very uh, outspoken people in the state or parents uh, for fair funding of students in the state. She realizes, well, when we've had the conversation, she realized Waynesboro is one of the worst as far as fair funding. They're not treated the same as other districts. And she knows she's doing it for other districts also, but she's going to come here and explain the lawsuit that is involved in the state for that fair funding. Uh, you know, so, you know, it went to the legislators. It's pretty tough for them to be able to do that, uh, to figure it out. So it's in court, Commonwealth Court right now. The court case is going on at this time. So she's going to explain that and the impact. But, you know, she said she only has one or two, maybe at the most two slides, but she'd like to share that. The only other thing I would like just to offer my condolences to the family, um, the Rouser family. Um, Dr. Mindy Rouser did serve on the school board, um, and she has students that attended the Waynesboro School District. Both her boys, I believe, are seniors this year. So condolences to the family in addition to the Henshaw family as well. I was told that next Wednesday's wrestling is her honor. They were to wear pink. Bocce ball is this is uh is this um thursday, thursday as well uh believe that at three o'clock where do three we go to, to get in i want to come senior high school and There's just at the uh, auditorium, auditorium. It's like, like oh down auditorium yep okay. i mean yeah like if you would come into the athletic events or the okay. auditorium you want to come okay. in there and we do have a wellness committee meeting at 6 30. we have an established committee but um any members of the board or in community at large that like to attend they're welcome to attend thank you okay thank you Board comments. Mm -hmm. Anyone? This is probably insignificant. But with Mr. Marvin, you know, being at a distance, you know, his PA comes in after you have already said, you know, anyone opposed, et cetera. And it's because of the delay, you know, that so I just want to make people aware of that. And I taught distance learning for a number of years. And I had a class in front of me, and I had a class, you know, in Penn's Valley, hours <laughs> away from me. And we would make a funny comment in class. My class here in front of me would laugh. They would laugh after we had laughed, you know, because <laughs> of the delay. So I just want to make everybody aware that Mr. Marvin is doing it. Exactly what he's supposed well, to I should do. probably <laughs> wait a little longer. Yeah, between the two questions, yeah. Yeah, I should yeah. wait a longer yeah, it's, in between. It's so. Okay. So, okay. I just <laughs> wanted to as long as they're all recorded yeah. and he's yeah. clicking, yeah. so that's good. Okay. Yep. I, I should wait longer for that. Okay. Okay. Anything else for board comments? Okay. If not, then we'll move to adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion mm -hmm. to adjourn. Second. Okay. So that's Ms. Strait and whoever you want, Dr. Royer or Ms. Zimmerman. <laughs> okay, we will also be going uh, to executive session. We will not be returning uh, for uh, personnel. I guess it's a personnel item. So, uh, so all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 I'm waiting.
Okay, I guess James before that. Okay, uh, all those opposed? <laughs> Done. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>